Welcome to four essential things that you must focus on in order to get results when you're practicing alternate picking, at least if you want to get to the highest level and everyone can. If you don't have these four things in your focus at all times, you will not get to anywhere near expert level. You will stay at intermediate. So this is really crucial. The first thing is simply how you move your pick. And you cannot see this, you cannot decipher this by looking at close up slow motion videos and then say, oh, this is what he's doing. Because this is so minute. This is not, this is about how you actually use your muscles. And if you're doing it right, the string shifting will be much easier than if you're not doing it right. When I say right, I just mean most efficiently, right? Most productively, right? So what is it? Well, some people pick up and down like this. It's basically an axe movement, right? They try to do it with their hand and then they go up and down like that. Some people actually use their fingers. So the picking motion is controlled by the muscles of their fingers in, in the underarm here. And both of these, uh, the, the, the thing with the fingers gives you weird uh, fatigue in your arm. Most people who, who started using that technique really hate it because they have to revert to something else because this doesn't work in the long run if you use your fingers. And you, can, you might want to comment underneath if you have anything to say about what I'm saying in this video. That would be interesting. The other technique, while you're using your whole arm, basically you have this axe movement or you try to use your hand to do the axe movement, is also quite ineffective. And accuracy, you know, playing, you know, playing silent alternate picking. Where you're not really, it's really, and then going for the. It's harder because you're using such a big uh, part of the body. So the details gets left out. But when you're using the pendulum picking technique, which is, uh, which is what I recommend, it's a totally different story. See, when you're using your arm, you have to do, do like this. Try to do that right now. Just like that, right? Or with your hand, do the axe movement. That's really hard to get any even motion here, right? And also, if you use your fingers, it's even harder. How, how do you get an even motion using your fingers like that? But if you use the pendulum technique, which is basically relaxing your fingers and holding the pick between the thumb and the first finger, and then rolling it like that. So instead of doing this, you go like that. And see, it's like the even the, the, the remaining fingers here, they work as kind of a pendulum. So it becomes easier to go back and forth rhythmically in with timing. And also you get this kind of circular motion, don't you? Where if you imagine the string is right here, then you're picking the string and then leaving it. So you're going out from it, right? Which makes it really cool if you've imagined this being two strings. Let me see if I can do it here. This being two strings. So if you're picking like this with a circular motion here with your pendulum hand, then if I want to go from string to string, I pick this string and I go out and I go in again naturally, right? So when you're picking with the axe movement up and down like that, it's really hard to shift strings because you have to use a pendulum movement to get to the next string. Otherwise, you're going to hit it on your way there, right? If you have the axe movement and you want to, this is an upstroke and this is the downstroke, you have to move away from the strings and then in again. But that already happens with pendulum movement. And it's more even, it's easier to get even, and it's easier to go from string to string. John McLaughlin, Paul Gilbert, Aldi Miola, all pendulum picks, but you cannot see it. Because it, once you go from this, which is really easy to see what I'm doing here, right? And I go down here and I place my PC bone, which is where the pinky goes down, then you have the hand, and then right where it becomes the wrist, you have kind of a hard spot there. If you take that and place it approximately where the low E string meets the bridge, and then you do your pendulum movement. When I go, when I go really small movements here from that, and I go, so you have a loose connection here. When I go from this, you can see the pendulum now, right? Once I anchor my hand, I still do the pendulum movement. It's the same muscles. Then you cannot see the pendulum anymore. See, this is pendulum. This is the axe movement. And the hand. This is pendulum. Pendulum now. This is axe movement. See, now my, my arm is activated. Pendulum. Right. And, and the pendulum, even though I'm anchoring my hand, 
and you cannot see the pendulum movement, it's what muscles am I using when I'm doing it? So please start holding your finger or your pick between the thumb and the index and then have your practice this motion. Also, you can practice without your guitar, do the accents, which is something we're going to talk about later. And then you can go around -da 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 like strumming, right? What if you do, just as an example, what do you do if you're strumming like this? Let me see if I can get some sound here. Why are you using, ah, this needs some tuning here. But you're using that kind of axe movement when you're strumming, right? Right? And you forgot to tune your guitar, and then suddenly you want to do a Spanish kind of... What, if I, what do I do naturally, intuitively? If I want to go from... Right, I can use my hand like this. Right, or I can go... Right? As soon as I want to go faster than this... <laughs> Try it out yourself when you're when you're strumming. See if you can do this, right? That's also what happens when flamingo players do the, the thing with the right? It's a pendulum thing because it's easier to get that even movement. So you can do an even movement just by going like that because you have the weight of the fingers waving back and forth like that. If you try to do that with your arm, it's a different place. Different story. So that's the first rule. Do Pick with a pendulum movement, and also when you can't see what you're doing because the, the movements are so small, ask yourself, is this the feeling or is this the feeling or this, right? So next thing is when I started out learning how to alternate pick, I was just picking, right? I was just going along. I learned, okay, alternate picking is picking up and down. So that's what I did. I picked up and down. But this kind of jumpy thing is not what we want because that's not what we do when we play fast. We cannot take this very far because the, the, the movements are simply too, too strong and too big. Also, when we're phrasing, this is cool. Right? <laughs> we want big movements because then we can really influence the tone, the note that we're playing. But when we're playing fast, we have to use small movements. And the note is so short, right, in a run. <laughs> Right? That we cannot phrase. We, we can perhaps, you know, influence the sound. Right? Of, of all the notes, right? But not of each individual note. So you have to use very small, effective movements. It's like a machine. So it, one of the principles I started, you know, working with uh, pretty early, actually, was to practice what I want to learn. Magical concept. To practice what it is that I actually want to learn. And if I want to learn fast alternate picking, I don't want to go. I want to go. Small movements, because that's what I want to end up with doing, right? When I'm playing fast. So if it looks like this. Right? Then I want to start with that and just use very small movements. But what does that require you to do? It requires you to pick in the surface of the string. And I'm saying surface. If this is the string, you know, then I'm picking here. You know, when, when I'm phrasing, I might really dig into it and do all kinds of stuff and pinch harmonics and all kinds of stuff. But when I'm practicing picking, I just want to graze the string at the top of it. I, you know, if you were to look like this, right, at the guitar from this angle, and you saw your pick digging into the string, this is totally down towards the body. This is just, oh, you can't see this, this isn't too far away, but this is in the just the surface of the string. So now I'm not going any deeper than the string itself. So yeah, I wouldn't be able to see the pick if I did this, right? <laughs> so, so that's what we, you, you want to do. And that creates miracles for most people because we're used to going. But as soon as we go to the surface of the string. And then magically you play super fast. No, but. It just, it eases up the, the, the resistance that each pick stroke, you know, every time you hit the pick, you have to push through the string, right? But when you pick in the surface, there's absolutely almost no resistance. So that makes it easier for you to control your picking motion. But the hard thing is, of course, that when you're doing this, that you might miss the string. 
And that's why people are digging more into the strings, that if, you, if, if you're just at the surface of it, right, it takes only a tenth of a millimeter or a thirtieth of an inch, right, uh, to miss the string and to pick too high. And that's why we're not doing it, basically. So in order to be safe, we can pick very deep. Then we know that, you know, these little differences and in, 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 it doesn't make that, you know, that much of a difference. But we can't take that to the highest level. So we need to start picking with precision and accuracy in, at the surface of the string. And it forces you to focus on precision because it forces you to really make sure that you have the same picking depth every single time. And what does that do? The same picking depth gives you the same amount of resistance every time you cross the string, wouldn't you say? Same picking depth, same amount of resistance. So the brain knows how much it's going to push in order to get through the string or across the string. So it can have the same, just a smidge of a, 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 a change in the resistance will make you play that note a little bit later, which makes the whole thing uneven, right? Wouldn't you say? But when we're playing deep in the string, we use a lot of force because then we're sure to cross the string. I can cross the string, you know, in the surface or deep. Doesn't matter because I'm just powering through, right? So I'm gonna get across, right? Like, doesn't matter my picking depth. When I'm using a lot of force, then I'm just compensating for the fact that I have zero accuracy, which leads us to the last point on my list here. Uh, but, Pick in the surface, at, at least when you're not practicing phrasing, which is t a totally different thing. When you're practicing alternate picking, right? It really is a totally different discipline once you start focusing on that. So now, uh, never ever practice alternate picking without picking in the surface. Let's move on to the next element. <laughs> uh, when you're practicing alternate picking, if you're not doing this, the following thing to focus on, you're not practicing alternate picking because alternate picking, of course, is picking the string, right? We can agree on that, but we have to synchronize the picking motion with the left hand. And you can do that at slow levels of speed because the brain can kind of synchronize by itself. But as soon as you get to higher levels of speed, the synchronization just blah, it just goes away because the brain needs a place to focus on. And the, the, the place of that is your accent. So when you're playing triplets, for instance, three notes on one string, you want to have the first note out of the three be the loudest, which means that you're not only picking in the surface, you're picking just a slight bit deeper when you do the accent. And then you, you pick it at the surface again. You see the complexity here? So you have to pick a little bit deeper, which requires you to push a little bit harder through the string, which creates a louder note, right? <laughs> What happens in the brain is that you can you cannot play any single notes uh, faster than you can sing them. So if I go that's kind of my limit, right? But that's also the same speed at which your brain can process notes. So if you don't have accents, then you cannot go beyond that speed with your body because you need control. As soon as you lose control, it's just going to be tremolo picking with you doing something down here, right? That doesn't work. That's not what we want. We want things to be musical. So what you do is you, you create an accent. So now the brain has a way of grouping three notes into one, like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then it goes from playing single notes da, 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 to just firing off groups of three if you do the accents. So it can, it can go ba -da -da, ba -da -da, ba -da -da. It's like a button. Ba -da -da, ba -da -da, ba -da -da, ba -da -da, ba -da -da. Right? It, it becomes one thing. So, like, I'm not pro processing these six notes. It's just a pattern. That's what the brain does. But it couldn't do that without grouping them into groups of six. And the first thing you do is you create an accent for every third note. Then you can take that so high. Right? Because the, the third note, as I'm playing faster and faster, 
I actually start grouping the notes into six notes instead, because the three, it, if I go right, I can only process the groups of three as fast as I can sing every third note. So it only becomes. I hope that makes sense. So because so it becomes something like. Right, that's pretty fast. But if I if I the next level for you is to try and group six notes into one or four notes into one to get more in there to create groups that are even faster, right? Once once you get to the level, the highest level of three. So practicing with accents guarantees that you will be able to synchronize your hands at higher levels. And it simply is a prerequisite for playing fast, period. Because if you don't group, if you don't do the accents, you're wasting your time, basically. You're not practicing alternate picking, you're just wasting your time. So do the accents and make sure they're in there. And it will enable you to play faster than, uh, than you uh, would even believe at this point, perhaps. Let's look at the final uh, element that you must focus on in order to get to the highest level. Next thing is perhaps the most important. It, it is to counteract the intuitive way of practicing, which is the worst way of practicing when it comes to alternate picking. If we want to build speed, we have to focus on accuracy. I'll repeat that. If we want to build speed, we have to focus on accuracy. See, when I started out, I used to practice and practice and practice, and I used to see if I could push my tempo up, right? So I was playing something, and I used to practice just at the highest level I could. I played as fast as I could while remaining in some amount of control, and then I just practiced and practiced, try to push the upper limit of what I could do. And I used I lost synchronization. I did some inaccuracies when I was speaking, so I pulled back a little, and then I pushed and pushed and pushed. And I did that for about a half a year, and then I just discovered how lousy a technique I had. There must there, there had to be a better way, and I didn't become much faster. And the speed I gained was just like crammed up and and insecure. I felt insecure when I was playing. So what is the best technique? Well, it is to practice and listen for this sentence. Practice at a level where you can remain in 1000% control, playing with zero mistakes, zero, and zero insecurities, while getting everything right and remaining totally relaxed. What is that tempo? So if you play six notes up, that was a long sentence, by the way. If you play these six notes up, I mean, the fifth, seventh, and ninth fret on the D and the G string, or you just play three notes on one string, what is the highest tempo, and I'm gonna repeat it, in which you can remain in complete control, make zero mistakes, and I mean zero mistakes, right? <laughs> and being totally relaxed as you practice. What is that tempo? And my guess is it's below 50% of your top speed, of what you consider to be your top speed. Maybe it's even lower. See, if you want, let's say you got a top speed of whatever, right? Uh, uh, let's say it's that, right? And you want to improve that. Instead of being and practicing at this speed, you have a performance speed, which is your top speed. And you can do that, it sounds pretty great, right? And you can perform, you can do that something with that when you make music. And then you have a practice speed, and your practice speed is way lower than your performance speed. When you practice at your practice speed, then you go back and say, okay, I wanna improve my top speed. So let's play what I just played uh, a thousand times. Let's play a thousand triplets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can just, you know, uh, you play at your the, the tempo with which you can remain in complete control and get everything right and make zero mistakes. And then you just, you know, look at the clock and say, how many repetitions am I doing in 30 seconds? And then you can times that up and say, okay, I have to practice for one hour or two hours or three hours to get my thousand repetitions, right? Do thousand repetitions, then return to your performance speed and just play alternate picking like you would. And I guarantee that you will feel an added sense of control when you do it, and you'll have improved your top speed. See, I, I used to work with people who were, you know, in front of the camera, like I am now, and they used to say, I got this lick, I want to teach this lick. And they played the lick and they couldn't get it down. They're just trying, you know. 
<laughs> they're just making mistake upon mistake, and the worse they did, the worse they did, right? The more they tried, the the the. You know, so you could take a break, right? You could say, "Oh, take a break and try again." But I didn't do that. I said, "Play it the same link that you want to play at fifty percent the speed that you're trying to play it now, and do that ten times, just ten times." In every single case, when they return and we, you know, start the camera, they were fine, right? They played the freaking lick that they wanted to play with no mistakes at that performance level. See, the brain does a weird thing that it thinks because we got a monkey brain, right? At least the deeper levels, right? So it thinks that hey, I have to play something fast, so I practice fast. That is the worst mistake you can make. Instead, return to just like a like a meditation. You focus on all the elements of picking in the surface, doing the pendulum thing, having your hand in the right place, and then you just go thousands of repetitions, right? And then you go back and test your max speed. See how comfortable it feels. See, the, feel the added control. But you have performance speed and you have practice speed. There is not a thing in between. Practice with zero mistakes. Zero mistakes and stay at that tempo and then test to see what happened to your performance speed. And always go back and say, I want to do a thousand repetitions or I want to do this. I'm going to watch a 90 minute movie, right? Why just go. And it's a boring movie. You know, I'm watching it with my mom who likes these movies. So, but I can watch it because now I'm practicing as I do it, right? And you just keep on doing that. And then you return after that, you crank up the amp and then you go after 90 minutes of repeating at the, you know in total control <laughs> doing these things where you get everything right i promise you you will feel feel an added sense of control and that added sense of control when you play fast is an increase in speed because now you can push it up now you can play even faster and be sloppy like you did before but now your your max sloppy tempo is faster, right? So I hope all of this was beneficial to you. And if it was, don't forget to comment on anything I said in this video. Any, everything is welcome. And subscribe to this channel and go download our free course on alternate picking by clicking the link in uh, the description. And then I hope to see you in uh, the next video.